This video is brought to you by Headshot Tools. Hey, welcome back to the channel. This is Gary Hughes, and today I want to talk about generative AI fill. This is a new feature in Photoshop beta, not regular Photoshop, that was just recently added, and everyone's kind of going crazy about it. It's, it's a huge deal. But I want to talk about it in terms today of how a headshot photographer might use it to do something that headshot photographers do a lot, which is replace backgrounds. And so I'm always trying to think of how to use tools like this in my workflow. And I've got some pretty cool ideas that I want to share with you. So like, subscribe, leave a comment if you have any questions. And thanks for watching the video. I'm going to go ahead and head over here to the laptop and show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so I've got a pretty standard headshot here opened up, and this is something that I do a lot, which is shoot on a kind of an unlit white background. I end up changing the color of these or pulling them out and adding stock backgrounds completely to give my clients lots of options. And with this new generative AI fill tool, you're gonna have a lot of options really, really fast, but just make sure that you're gonna open up your Creative Cloud app and that you go over to apps and then down to beta, and that's where you'll be able to find Photoshop beta. It is included with your Adobe subscription. You don't have to do anything extra to get it. Just download it and start using it. You're gonna see features that you're not gonna see in regular Photoshop. So right off the bat, if you're clicking into the job, you're gonna see down here at the bottom, you have this, this new, this is, this is new, this is new, this is new. It's called the contextual task bar or something. Um, if it's not there when you open it up, go over to window and down to contextual task bar and that will enable it. So right off the bat, I wanna tell you about something that I think is really cool. This button is exciting and the contextual taskbar actually will be there if you update to the most recent version of Photoshop, but it doesn't have the generative fill, but it does have this button, remove background. And this is a surprisingly cool feature that Adobe has added. Now I wanna show you how it works. All you have to do is click it and it's gonna knock the background out, which is pretty rad. Now that might make you think, oh my God, that makes my life so much easier. Just hold your horses. I don't think it's quite there yet. The best way to look to see if a cutout is any good is to throw a black background behind it, right? So I'm gonna go create a layer. I'm gonna fill it with black, and then I'm gonna drag it underneath. And this is where you're gonna see the shortcomings of this automatically. So at this point in time, I know it's in beta, so don't sweat it. At this point in time, you're still gonna have to go in there and refine those edges using the sort of select and mask tool, but that's not what I wanted to talk about. I'm glad that this button exists and it's in beta, which means that Adobe is working on this and over time, I think it's gonna get better. So I cannot wait until I can just batch remove a bunch of backgrounds in Photoshop without having to send a bunch of images off to a service. It could save me a lot of time and money uh, and be really, really easy to do. Now let's go ahead and uh, just go back to the beginning on this image using the history state just to where we are. Now, what I wanted to show you here was how to use this to replace the background. If you select the subject in this contextual taskbar, uh, it keeps popping down to the bottom, which I find a little bit annoying. You can inverse the selection, which is going to select the background. So select, select the subject, then inverse the selection. And right away, you're gonna see generative fill pop up. And this is where you're gonna get to add text prompts and the AI is going to fill that space in with what it thinks you're asking for. Well, it keeps popping down to the bottom. Why does it do that, Adobe? Why? So here, let's pretend that this guy is a therapist, right? So I'm gonna make a background for him. I'm gonna say, let's say blurry background. Thera, therapist office. Let's say comfy furniture and generate. So this is all gonna happen in the cloud, which means it's not gonna be super, super zippy, but and usually for my computer and I'm running an M1 Mac mini, it takes about 15, maybe 20 seconds to complete. So you're gonna watch what happens. This actually can be pretty cool. Boom, right off the bat, it looks pretty freaking convincing. Most headshot photographers struggle to organize and deliver team and event headshots. They either do everything manually, taking up hours of their time, or they homebrew a complex system combining multiple apps. That's why we built Headshot Tools, a comprehensive solution specifically tailored to solve the unique problems headshot photographers face. You'll be confidently delivering the best client experience to any size group without breaking a sweat. Right now, Headshot Tools is in a closed beta where users will get unlimited access to all features, including unlimited jobs, 
storage and uploads for only $59 a month. Automatic file renaming, custom signup forms, individual galleries, mass email notification, and retouched image selection, all in one easy to use platform. To request your beta access code, just email support at headshottools.com and say, I want beta access. That's support at headshottools.com. You'll notice that it matches lens perspective, it matches direction of light, and it even pulls from colors in the image so that it still maintains sort of a basic color harmony, which is kind of amazing. There are a few limitations here, like you can't necessarily go in there and start messing with the things that didn't really go well. Like some of the edges are gonna not look great depending on the versions. So under the properties tab, you're gonna see variations right here. And if you click on the different variations and go between them, if you look around at the top of his head and at his beard here, and around his ears, not every cutout is a good one. And so I think that's gonna improve over time and the options that we're gonna to get to refine these selections will improve. But right now I find that usually like one out of every three, not only does the background suit what I want, but the cutout is really good or, or, or convincing or at least not so bad that you notice. So right off the bat, I like this one a lot, but maybe I want some more options. So using that same text prompt, I'm just gonna generate a couple more options. It's gonna generate three at a time. And again, like I said, about one in every three seems to be what I'm looking for. And uh, I think that's pretty rad considering it only takes 15 or 20 seconds to get three backgrounds dropped in for you automatically. So here you go, you're gonna have some options here and there's a couple more. And you can see again, the cutout around his head up here isn't great. It, it kind of blows my mind that sometimes the cutout's perfect and sometimes it's just kind of wonky. But overall, I think we're getting Pretty good results. Oh, he's, he's in a chair now. Look, <laughs> that's kind of exciting. So what's really cool about this is that you can change the prompt and do it again. So let's just say instead of therapist office, we'll say like tech company office and see what happens. And we're gonna generate that. And the more variations you add, it actually holds them all in this variations panel. So you can kind of go back and forth. And in a way it kind of saves your work, which is great. But my question is, how do I put this into a workflow with a client in a way that's actually workable, right? So in this case, what I usually will do, ah, there you go, a couple more options. Man, that actually looks pretty good. So, ooh, there's beard looks a little wonky on the side there. All right, so let's say that I've, my, my favorite so far of these variations is probably this one. So not that one, one that doesn't, ah, there we go, that's pretty good. The one where he's in the chair is, is kind of excellent. All right, so let's say that I like that one. I wanna send this to my client, right? So the first thing that you can do is you can export these as JPEGs using the export feature to create kind of proofs of these backgrounds. So if you go to file and export, you can export this as a JPEG, res it down to 2048 for web size proof and upload it to whatever gallery system you use and start to show your clients some of these better options that this thing turns out with. Now, what happens that I found is really cool is you can save this as a PSD. So let's go to file, we're gonna save, and this is automatically, because it's in layers, gonna save it as a PSD. So we'll call this therapist backgrounds and save that. I'm just save that in my downloads folder as a PSD. All right, so all your work is still there. Now, if I close it and then I reopen it, let's go to my downloads folder, loop and I open Therapist PSD. All of those variations are still there. How cool is that? I'm pretty excited about this. So you can actually proof these for your clients, save a PSD, and if they pick one, you can go back to it and then get to work on it. So this is the way that I'm starting to use this to proof these and, and employ this tool in my workflow with my clients. Lots and lots of options with very little work. I hope that this was helpful to you and you might find some ways to employ this in your business. If you have any ideas, go ahead and leave them in the comments. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and thanks for watching.